Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we prepare for Grandmaster. For years, we've been fighting to keep the last city and its people safe. Our latest efforts off-world to keep Cabal leaders from strengthening Katal's war council have been fruitful. But sometimes, the danger is closer to home than you think. If you haven't seen the cutscene that went live on Tuesday, we won't spoil it for you. All we say is that what happened would not be taken lightly. For the twab this week, we have a refresher on Grandmaster Nightfalls for the new lights out there, a preview for some stasis tuning coming next week, and results for our Festival of the Lost armor ornament boat. Let's get to it. Yeah, really, really, narratively, like, I really like the pacing that Bungie has done this season. I hope it continues. Now, move Moving on, Grandmasters of the Universe. Are you ready for a challenge? Starting on March 16th, Grandmaster Nightfalls become available. Never heard of a Grandmaster Nightfall before? No problem. Let's get you up to speed. Strike difficulty is set to 1350 power. Minimum power required is 1325. Contest mode is enabled. So even if you go higher than 1325, you will be capped. Each strike will have a specific set of modifiers to ramp up the difficulty. So make sure to inspect each one to know which champions you'll face and what other challenges awaits you. One Grandmaster Nightfall will be available each week until April the 20th. Starting April the 20th, you will have the opportunity to blaze all available Grandmaster Nightfalls through a direct launch playlist. If you miss a week, the final three weeks of the season are your opportunities to catch up. All right, hold on. First up, contest mode on Grandmaster Nightfalls? That's kind of insane. Really, really, man. Grandmaster Nightfalls, depending on the nightfall, will drive you crazy. Y'all remember Corrupted? Yeah, Corrupted Strike, probably one of the worst Grandmaster Nightfall experiences ever, but simultaneously the best experience when we finally finished it. Now, this season will also be your first opportunity to earn adept weapons through a PvE activity, while Shadow Price, Paladrome, and the Swarm have each been available when completing lower difficulties of Nightfalls. Adept versions will only be available through Grandmaster difficulty. That's right, guys. The Swarm, Pally, and Shadow Price will have their more perfected versions their adept versions dropping from Grandmaster. And I'm assuming at some point we'll probably have like double loot drops, even for Grandmasters here. But hands down, this should really amplify all of these weapons. These weapons grant additional stat bonuses when mass work and can be socketed with adept weapon mods. You can earn these mods in Trials of Osiris, and you'll be able to earn them through Grandmaster Nightfalls as well. Dude, I am really wondering if that's going to be locked to one mod a week, or is it just going to be an opportunity to get a brand new mod with each completion? Now, additionally, this will be your first opportunity to earn Gilded versions of the Conqueror title. You may see someone sporting this in a few weeks. No, they went through an ordeal to earn it. Lamau? Well, not just one, but many. Now's the time to form a fire team and start strategizing how you'll work together to overcome the challenge. Smoke bombs might come in handy when things are looking dire, or a well-placed Nova bomb to eliminate some champions that have been stunned near each other. Word on the street is that the Cult of Aeon is rising up through the ranks, helping Guardians to keep their ammunition stocked during the fight. We're excited to see what strategies you create in the face of challenge, and to see what sweet loot you claim from the hands of your enemies. Eyes up, Guardians. Dude, DMG ain't lying there. Aeon Gauntlets are kind of meta, fellas. So yeah, Grandmaster's coming next week, guys. We're gonna be all over it. Contest mode for the first 24 hours. It should be nasty. Moving on. Patch note previews. Over the last few weeks, numerous teams throughout the studio have been working on bug fixes ranging from strikes to sandbox. Our current target for Destiny 2 update 3.1.1 is next Tuesday, March the 16th. While this isn't the largest patch we've shipped, we're excited to get these fixes out in the wild. Additionally, we've made a commitment to some balance passes for stasis in Destiny 2021 update, The Road to the Witch Queen. We had a few notes on how we'd be tuning the Titan Behemoth, Hunter Revenant, and Warlock Shanebinder subclasses. So first up, Destiny 2 update preview for March 16th patch, which is next Tuesday. Starting with Strikes, Fallen Saber, fix an issue, where the Strike boss would not spawn until all players were alive and present, improve objective waypoint behavior, fix some grammatical errors in player directive text, fix a bug where a fire team member entering the area late could cause a warsat falling visual effects again, fix an issue where Zavala's dialogue in the first area could play multiple times, fix a bug where a fallen energy shield could be sticking out of the wall, Devil's Lair, Sebex Prime now has a boss health bar, fix some floating environmental objects, fix an issue where some monster spawn points looked like accessible doorways to players. Fix an issue where an overload captain could spawn with the wrong name. 
Oh, well, isn't that just deceptive? Fix an issue where the Fallen Walker and Fallen Briggs could respawn after they were defeated. Oh, that was a bug? Dude, I thought Bungie was just like, yo, die. Fix an issue where physics was missing from a wall early in the strike, allowing players to get lost out of the environment. Yep, physics, man. Geometry and destiny. Moving on to armor. Fix an issue with the linear actuator exotic perk for Titan exotic doom archers, which was not triggering properly. The perk now behaves as expected, triggering on each subsequent melee strike after an appropriate amount of sprint time. Font of Might no longer displays a generic damage boost string when its benefit is active. Fixed a bug where the mantle of battle harmony and Omni Oculus exotics were not displaying their flavor text. Omni Oculus also no longer grants melee energy when making only your Self invisible under certain circumstances. Curess of the Falling Star no longer grants an overshield when used with supers other than Thundercrash. Okay, I thought that was about to be a serious nerf. I didn't even know it gave an overshield to other supers. Holy hell, that's kind of busted. Moving on to weapons. Fix an issue where flavor text wasn't appearing for several seasonal weapons. Added Rumble to the end of Dead Man's Tail Reload. Adjusted Wrist Runner's perk VFX that were causing epileptic issues. Oh boy, it's always bad, man. Dude, that's like a thing in games, though, right? Right? Like, if you're an epileptic, holy hell, don't play Cyberpunk. Reduce Arbalest aim assist, making it harder to hit headshots in Crucible. Oh my gosh. Arbalest has finally been dealt with. Set the Frenzy and Cranial Spike perks to use the correct buff icon. Fix Tiku's Divination missing kill feed icon. After a few weeks of development and play tests, we also have a round of stasis balancing slated for March the 23rd. Okay, so I guess this is like the preview for that. Stasis tuning preview for March 23rd's patch, which is not next week, it's the week after. After. Before we dive into the patch notes, we have a few words from the team to walk through their goals of this tuning pass. Hey everyone, game playing team at Bungie here. We've made some targeted changes to Stasis in Season 12 and wanted to see how they landed before making any more adjustments. Now that we've had several weeks of data to analyze, we're ready to make some further changes to address additional pain points of stasis in PvP. Our goal with these changes is to reduce some of the frustrations when fighting against stasis subclasses in the Crucible while maintaining their power in PvE content wherever possible. With that said, some changes require us to adjust the global behavior of some abilities. In the patch notes below, we've explicitly mentioned which changes will affect Crucible functionality only. We'll be closely monitoring ability performance and feedback as Season 13 continues. Thanks for playing, and we're excited to see how the future stasis unfolds. Alrighty, so starting first with the Hunter class, Shatter Dive. Remove damage resistance from Shatter Dive. Also added a 4 second cooldown between activations of Shatter Dive. Withering Blade. Decrease Withering Blade damage against players from 90 to now 65. PvE damage is unchanged. Decrease Withering Blade slow stacks apply to players from 60 to 40 stacks, PvE slow stacks are unchanged. Decrease the target acquisition range of Withering Blade after it impacts a player from 12 meters to now 8 meters. Range after impact in PvE enemies is unchanged. I just want to point out real quick how amazing it is that Sandbox team is able to go in there and with the scalpel, fine tune subclasses between PvE and PvP for years now. Everyone had this assumption that Bungie couldn't do it, and now look at that, they're doing it. Now, these are some pretty major changes, okay? I still think Withering Blade and what it does, just its disorient and slow effects, is still gonna be good. 90 damage now 65, 12 meters now reduced to 8 meters. I would say the range is probably the biggest thing, but even now, I get hit way beyond 12 meters. Like again, it states decrease the target acquisition range of Withering Blade after it impacts a player from 12 meters to 8 meters. Okay, I got you. So the ricochet, the ricochet, essentially, you know how it goes through players after an impact and it just kind of like boomerangs everywhere. Maybe that's the reduction. Dude, 8 meters is still really good. Like, it's still really good, guys. Next on the chopping block, we have the Titan. Starting with Glacial Quake, remove AoE freeze against players on super cast. We still freeze PV enemies on cast. Look at that. I just want to point out how amazing that is. Bungie is completely changing the identity of these supers. Like something like that, that I feel like is a difficult thing to change between activities. They're doing it. Reduce damage resistance while in super from 60% now to 50%. Increase the energy cost of using Shiver Strike while in Glacial Quake from 3% to 7% of super energy. Using the combo of Shiver Strike into a heavy slam attack will now cost the full super energy of both the Shiver Strike and Slam. Previously only costed energy for 
destroyed the slam. Wow, I didn't even know that. So now it's going to consume both of those. Now, the Shiver Strike itself increased downwards velocity applied to Shiver and Strike players when they are slow to pull them out of the air more strongly. Okay, did I read that last part right? Is Shiver Strike going to hit harder? Increase downward velocity? Does this mean more killed by the Architects from Shiver Strike? I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at that wrong. Overall, no major reduction in the super duration itself. More or less an increase in the superconduction on the light attack. And of course, the combo attacks will now count for both. All right, moving on. Warlocks. I'm actually going to be really surprised if there's a nerf in here. I, I kind of think there's going to be a buff. Winter's Wrath. Improved tracking of Winter's Wrath projectiles. Now tracking strength decays from its max value over 10 seconds instead of 2.2 seconds. Oh, wow. Wow. Increases size of Warlock super projectile proximity detonation radius from 1.5 meters to now 1.65 meters. What the hell? A whole 0.15? I'll take it. The proximity detonation now starts at its largest and scales down to 40% over time. Now the penumbral blast, the melee, decreased penumbral blast damage against players from 80 to now 30 damage. PvE damage is unchanged. Ice flare bolts fixed a bug where ice flare bolts would continuously try to switch targets. Increased target acquisition range of ice flare bolts by 33%. Increased turning speed of ice flare bolts so they can more effectively hit nearby targets. All right. Right. Pretty much good stuff all around the board. Hopefully the turret's going to be a little bit better. Target acquisition buff by 33%. It's pretty nice, fellas. Now the last thing, Chaos Reach decreased the amount of super energy refundant when canceling Chaos Reach early. Ah, we knew it was coming, fellas. Don't get mad. Don't be mad. I know some of you are mad right now. Don't be mad. Just be happy. You got to abuse Chaos Reach for as long as you did. And you got one more weekend to cheese your way through trials with it. But next week, it's going to get smacked. Now, some general stuff in regards to our neutral game. Dust feel grenades. Reduce how strongly dust fill grenade pulls players inwards, effectively reducing the pull range from 9.5 meters to now six meters. PVE pull impulse is unchanged. Dude, at this point, Bungie Sandbox team is full blown flexing. They're like, yeah, look at that. Even the range, baby. You got two different games now. Reduce the slow stacks applied to players by the grenade detonation from 20 to 10 stacks. Detonation slow stacks are unchanged against PVE. Reduce the slow stacks applied to players on each tick of the grenade from 10 to now five stacks. Per tick slow stacks are unchanged against PVE. Adjusted UI presentation of the the slope status to display slow stacks as x out of 100 instead of x out of 10 to increase readability when adding slow stack amounts that are fewer than 10. That's right. Now that you can look down, you'll have a display status showing you when exactly you are screwed. Luckily though, now that it's been reduced from 9.5 meters to 6 meters, escaping a well-placed dust fill grenade might actually be possible. Now, Stasis Crystals reduced crystal shatter damage against players from 85 max, 55 minimum to now 55 max, 25 minimum. BV damage is unchanged. Whisper of Chains. Reduce Whisper of Chains damage resistance bonus while in a super from 25% to 5%. Damage resistance when not in super is unchanged. This only affects damage from other guardians. Whisper of Torment. Fix the bug where players could continuously proc Whisper of Torment while standing inside an opponent's barricade. Wow. Dude, I didn't even know about these bugs. Stasis Fragment Quests. Significantly reduce objective completion values for all Crucible Fragment Quests. Well, looky there. Should be easier to do those Fragment Quests, even though we've all pretty much done them. Now, if any issues are found over the next week, some of these changes may be delayed to a future date. Check out the player support report below for more details and stay tuned at Bungie Help for updates on our timelines. All right, guys. That that's your sandbox coming next week, or at least the strike stuff slash weapons and armor. The stasis tuning won't be coming next week, but instead on the 23rd, which means, oh my God, Chaos Reach is actually still going to be nasty for the next two weeks or a week and a half. Oh, okay then. I spoke too soon. Moving on. They do vote in Hertz. If you missed the tribe last week, we held our first ever community survey to determine which upcoming Festival of the Lost Ornament set would be available. Movie Monsters versus Dinosaurs, or Hashtag Team Monsters versus Hashtag Team Dinosaurs us if you're watching Twitter trends. Truth be told, we saw many more votes than anticipated. There were just over 200,000 votes cast, but a clear winner emerged. Our scientists were more preoccupied with whether or not they could. They didn't stop to think if they should. All said and done, we have a clear winner. Dinosaurs, fellas, that's right. Hashtag Team Dino, let's go. I know some of you are very happy. We were streaming last week and I had so many people coming in there. Speaking
spamming hashtag Team Dino. Now, we also have some known issues that are in the process of being addressed. And finally, finally, Trials of Osiris. We have resolved an issue that prevented Trials of Osiris from being active the past two weekends. Trials of Osiris will be re-enabled and active at the Daily Reset on Friday, March the 12th. Fellas, Trials is back, baby. Dude, really? This was actually an incredible turnaround from Bungie. I was expecting at least two, three, maybe even four week downtime. But Bungie jumping on this fast. I love to see it. Now, a final note here from DMG. Here we are, a full year of working remotely. Last year, I said that our weekly TWAB installments have been helping to keep my head focused on what day it is. But I must admit, I find myself asking what year it is more often than not. It's been March for about 12 months now, but I'm happy to say that things are starting to get brighter with each passing day. Cheers to the fire teams that have been keeping each other company over this last year. Cheers to those who have been staying safe supporting charities and doing whatever they can to help the communities through these times. You continue to serve as a line for those enduring some dark times and this world is a better place thanks to you. As we head into the weekend, I'll be spending some time with my Grandmaster Fire Team figuring out what days and times we'll be hitting these activities. We earned our initial Conquer titles and seasonal arrivals together and I'm pretty excited to go for Guild with the same group. Yeah, yeah, friend game is the true end game, gets memed on ever so often. But I'll be damned if I don't admit that this Fire Team has been the sickest loot I've ever gotten from Destiny. I hope you're able to form similar bonds through clans and friendships found in the Destiny community. They don't come often, but when they do, they can last a lifetime. Cheers, DMG. Hell yeah. Friendship is the true end game, fellas. And again, for those that are interested in finding a group to either do trials this weekend or Grandmaster Nightfalls next weekend, check out our Discord. We've got LFGs on all platforms, so feel free to come by and take advantage of it. Fellas, we'll be live tomorrow on Twitch for some trials and again next Tuesday. The best PvE team in North America will be going for that Gilded Conqueror title. Mr. Bombad, the Boogeyman, Les Joff, Mim, and myself would love to have you with us, guys. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.